Vince Freezy nearly ends Christian Craig's season, but gets away with it, while Eli Tomac shows a dominant performance in Glendale to extend his championship lead. I'm Tyler Deering, and welcome to GDN. What's going on, guys? My name is Tyler Deering, and welcome back to another episode of GDN Glendale Race Review Edition. Wanted to talk a little bit about the nonsense we saw from Vince Freezy and the Christian Craig crash. We're going to predominantly focus on that. But before that, we want to get to the top finishers from the 250 and the 450 races. So sorry the video is coming out a little bit late. Uh, here in Texas, we had a little bit of inclement weather over the weekend. Um, thankfully, that's all resolved. But anyway, let's get right into it. 250 main results. Overshadowed on the night, Hunter Lawrence comes home in first place, 2-1-2 in the three main events to take his second career victory in Supercross. This was huge for Hunter Lawrence, who had a lot of doubters uh, two years ago. Coming into the series two years ago, Lawrence was said that he couldn't stay healthy. Uh, it was said that he wasn't consistent enough to win races in Supercross or even contend for championships. At this point, he is pretty much the only one left that has a realistic chance at catching Christian Craig. Michael Moseman had some issues that we'll talk about later that pretty much knocked him out tonight. He had a horrible night. But anyway, huge night for Hunter Lawrence, second career victory. Unfortunately, it was overshadowed by the nonsense. Christian Craig comes home second, getting up after he got taken out in the main event number two. Joe Shimoda, who I just made a video about, go check that one out. It's the latest one. Uh, he came home third, got his first podium of the year, rode very well. Solid night for Joe. I think he can build on these performances. He's clearly got the speed, and he's able to stay healthy. So he might get a decent finish in the championship if guys keep going down. Garrett Marchbanks comes home fourth. What a run for him. Moto scores of 4-6-6. Six, six. I wish he could have done that in the earlier rounds because he's just had some bad luck. He's had some illness issues that he's had to deal with, but he's also had some crashes, some unfortunate circumstances. Good to see Marchbanks recover. Freezy comes home fifth, and honestly, this is the problem with Vince Freezy. We tend to yell at him for his incidents, but he is a good rider. If he just kept his nose out of trouble, we could probably see him contending for podiums. Instead, we have to deal with a lot of these crashes and a lot of this dirty riding. Jalik Swole 6 with Nate Thrasher 7th. Good night for Swole. Nate Thrasher is continuing to underwhelm after two wins last season. I don't think it was because the coast last season was less competitive. Thrasher just hasn't had the pace. I'm not sure if it's the motorcycle, if he's not vibing with it right now. But he had a crash in main event number one. He just fell down coming out of one of the 180-degree turns. He's just been off the pace. And, I mean, outside of leading a heat race ahead of Craig for about two seconds, he just hasn't had it. So looking for more out of Nate Thrasher, he's a very talented young guy, still very young. So we'll see if he can turn it on the rest of the season. But disappointing thus far. Michael Moseman comes home ninth. He was caught up in a crash in the first main event. Wasn't his fault. Got tangled up. Got caught up under the bike. Thankfully, he was okay. He finished 10th in the first main event, nearly caught Hunter Lawrence in the second. Unfortunately, in the closing stages of main event number three, Moseman crashed on the tabletop jump. It was kind of strange because although this was a championship-defining moment, Daniel Blair, the commentator, didn't sound all that excited about it. So that was a bit strange to me. When you watch the replay, the crash was gnarly. It was huge. Thankfully, Moseman was all right, but finishing that low in the points pretty much killed him because he had to make up ground on Craig. So tough night for Michael Moseman. Guy's a race winner, guy's got speed, but championship hopes are <laughs> evaporating quickly for Michael Moseman. Not much to say other than that in the 250 class, so let's get to it. The incident. Let's take a quick look at it right here, even though you've probably seen it a hundred times. Yeah, and you know, like looking back on this, uh, Christian Craig made the best of it. It's crazy, possibly could have got his first podium, but a poor decision. So I've seen this video several times from all different angles trying to see what exactly happened. Now, obviously, I'm not a professional supercross racer. I don't claim to be. But in my opinion, in the opinion of many others, this was a dirty move by Vince Freezy. The two were not riding the same rhythm lanes through the long rhythm section heading into the sand turn. Craig triples into the sand and commits to the outside line. And at that point, he has passed Freezy. He is ahead of Freezy going into the corner. And the piece of evidence that I saw that really sealed the deal for me on this was what we're going to show right now. So as you can see right here, I've circled the part where Vince Freezy's tire comes in. He blows up the inside rut, which he was doing before, so it wasn't like he'd never done that. But he blows up the inside rut, and instead of starting to turn then, he literally goes straight on through into Christian Craig. 
By that point, Craig was already ahead of him, and he actually hits his back tire. He doesn't even hit him in the front tire or anything like we saw with Anderson and Roxon. He has been passed by Craig, runs him straight off the track. Craig flies over the barriers onto the concrete, got super banged up. He posted on social media. This was a dirty move, but what did the AMA do? They did nothing. And this is my point. If the AMA can't penalize that, which was probably the most blatantly obvious takeout. I mean, it was on par with Bogle taking out Barsha, although Bogle was a lap rider, which I see why they penalized him there. How do you not penalize Freezy? I don't understand this. Freezy was behind Craig going into it. Craig commits to the outside to where he will not make contact with Freezy. Freezy doesn't even attempt to make the corner. If Craig isn't there, Freezy, I don't think he makes that corner at all. He might go over the barrier. So the fact that the AMA swallowed the whistle on this is a joke. It is an absolute mockery to have the championship leader flipping over the bars by somebody that had been passed by him and has a history of this. I think they should have been extremely harsh. I could see time taken off of main event number two, DQ for main event number three. The penalty they gave him was they put him on probation. Now, Justin Barsha spent most of his career on probation. It doesn't mean anything. He got off scot-free. It's a shame. He should be penalized in some form, whether it's points or if he does it again, time. The problem is if he does it again, he could seriously hurt somebody. It's just not worth it to pass Vince Freezy at this point. Now, I would say Christian Craig needs to go put him on the ground, but the problem is I don't want him to have a situation like where Roxon tried to do that to Cooper Webb a couple years back, got his arm stuck in the spokes. Anytime you're initiating contact with somebody, you're just asking for trouble. So I don't think that that's the right move from Christian Craig. The problem is at that point, how do you pass Freezy? Because he's a really good starter. He's probably going to be leading some main events. So the AMA has to come down with something. They probably won't. They definitely should because if it's not Christian Craig, it's somebody else. And we can't have these riders get hurt. They work too hard for that. Freezy needs to be penalized. That's all I'll say on the incident. Anyway, into the 450s, Eli Tomac looked absolutely dominant tonight. He didn't quite go 1-1-1, came home third in the third main event, but he was on a get-go. He's getting good starts, and he is really vibing with that motorcycle. It's going to be interesting to see if he can hang on to it. Tomac just looks different. There's just that presence in his face where he knows he's going to win, <laughs> and the rest of the competition's in trouble because Tomac is on it. We'll see what he does in A3 if he can open up that championship lead a little bit more. Malcolm Stewart, career best P2. He looked really good. He started well in all three races. I mean, you got to think that if he can just get a decent enough start, he could get up there. I mean, he was the fastest qualifier in A1. We know he's got speed. He's looked better than a lot of guys that I think we thought were going to contend with for... Stewart's looked better than a lot of guys that we thought were going to contend for wins. Stewart has looked better than a lot of guys that we thought were going to contend for wins. I mean, he's outrun Cooper Webb about every single week. Great stuff from Malcolm Stewart. Chase Sexton, after trouble in the first race, came back to go 3-1 in the last two motos. Looked really good, as always. It was a good points night for Chase. He's still in this championship hunt, so good recovery from him. Jason Anderson comes home fourth after wrecking in the second main event, going 2-12-2s, not bad. I mean, decent points tonight again. He's not out of it either. Ken Roxon in fifth, looked okay in heat one, just didn't have the pace in two and three. So disappointing for him. He needed to make up ground on Tomac. He's well back in the points. It would take a miracle at this point, obviously, for him to win the championship. It's getting to crunch time in Kenny's career. I don't know if he's ever going to win a championship. This was kind of looking like his year after he dominated A1. Justin Barsha, 6th, with Marvin Muskan 7th, Cooper Webb in 8th. Those guys were kind of around there all night, with the exception of Muskan, who had an incident in race 3 where he fell coming out of a 180-degree turn. Probably could have had a better finish. Positive momentum for Marv. Cooper Webb looked terrible, just going to be totally honest. He is nowhere near race-winning pace right now. His teammate Aaron Plessinger is also well off the pace. Outside of each one of them having a P2 finish, I don't know if they're going to get up there and contend anytime soon. I'm not entirely convinced it's Webb and Plessinger. I think it might be the motorcycle. They've got a new model in the KTM, and I don't know if they've got it quite figured out yet. Either way, that team does not look anything like it did last year. Dean Wilson, Shane McElrath, 9th and 10th. Great run for those guys. Dino getting a top 10. Not on pace with this teammate, but at this stage in his career, top 10s are solid. Plessinger, 11th. He rode there all night, as I talked about earlier. 
Dylan Fran is in 12th, has had a miserable season. His bike broke, it looked like, in the third main event, which ruined any type of good points finish. He and Plessinger have plummeted down the standings. He can't recover from it to win a championship this season. Can he get a race win? Maybe. I'm going to say maybe. Maybe an outdoor track like Daytona or Atlanta, but it's not looking good right now. He's still not a good starter. Further down the order is the typical guys you would expect, but as we head into a three Eli Tomac has a dominating hold on the championship. Let me know down in the comments if you think he will extend. Also, let me know down in the comments if you think Vince Freezy should have been penalized or if it was just clean racing. If you do, I'd love to hear your explanation because I don't see any way how that was possible, but let me know. I'm interested to hear. We'll see what the future holds for the 250 West class if Freezy continues to ride like this and who comes out on top. Hunter Lawrence is really the only one that has a chance to catch Craig. We'll see if he can do it. We'll see if Tomac can hold on. Thank you guys so much much the support means the world to me i'm uh, gonna keep making these videos and keep covering it for y'all thank you so much i'll see y'all in the next one